Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is blaming Russian forces for starting a fire at a nuclear power plant in southern Ukraine. He shared this video online showing smoke coming out of one of the towers at the Russian-controlled Zaporizhia plant. But Russia claims the fire erupted after a Ukrainian attack. Zelensky says Moscow is just using the nuclear plant to blackmail Ukraine and the rest of the world. He added that radiation levels in the area are normal. Meanwhile, Ukrainian troops are pushing deeper into Russia's Kask region after launching an incursion last week. The latest report by the Russian Defense Ministry indicates they have advanced up to 30 kilometers inside Russia. Joining us now is CNN's Claire Sebastian, live in London. Good to see you, Claire. So what is the latest on Ukraine's incursion into Russia? Yeah, Rosemary, what we're monitoring this morning uh, are reports of evacuations happening in a second Russian border region, Belgorod. This is a region that uh, really up until this incursion by Ukraine into Kursk last week was really the epicenter of the cross-border uh, attacks that we've seen, drone attacks, even sort of sabotage groups uh, in the past have crossed uh, into Belgorod. The governor this morning saying that they are starting uh, to evacuate people from one border district there. He's talking about a disturbing morning enemy activities uh, on the border. We're monitoring unofficial accounts uh, that Ukraine may have attacked there, though we cannot verify that. Uh, as of this point, could this be another attempt to sort of stretch the Russian forces, draw them away uh, from other areas? That is unclear uh, at this moment. Obviously, we've seen evacuations happen in the Kursk region over the weekend. Russian state media talked about at least 76,000 people uh, having to have been evacuated. They've, have to, they've had to set up temporary accommodation centers in eight other uh, different Russian regions so look if disruption is part of the plan here it certainly seems to be working and look for the first few days of this incursion we didn't hear much from Ukraine at all about this they were very very silent then on Saturday uh, President Zelensky spoke directly about it for the first time acknowledging that Ukrainian troops had gone into Russia he then elaborated further uh, on Sunday explaining why specifically they decided uh, to attack the Kursk region take a listen only from the beginning of this summer and only from the Kursk region, our Sumy region suffered almost 2,000 strikes, artillery, mortars, drones. We also monitor every missile strike, and each such strike deserves a fair response. So what he's saying essentially is that they are attacking in order to defend. They're trying to hit the weapons before uh, they hit Ukraine. And as uh, we've been monitoring this attack over the past week, we've also been watching for a potential Russian response. We did, of course, have a very deadly attack on a supermarket in eastern Ukraine uh, last week. Then overnight into Sunday, a very large barrage of drones, uh, in addition to some four uh, what Ukraine described as North Korean ballistic missiles. Two people were killed in the Kiev region. And then we saw on Sunday, President Zelensky came out, as you noted, uh, and accused Russia of starting a fire at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest nuclear power plant uh, in Europe. It's been occupied by Russia since the first weeks of the war. It's really sort of dropped out of the headlines recently. So this was certainly notable. Russia is accusing Ukraine of attacking the plant. The International Atomic Energy Agency, which has uh, observers at the plant, said that the fire, uh, they had witnessed the fire at a cooling tower, no radiation uh, risk as of now. But worth noting, because when we saw successful Ukrainian counteroffensives uh, in the autumn of 2022, that is when we started to see Russian nuclear threats also uh, escalate. So this is something to, to certainly keep an eye on here, Rosemary. All right. Many thanks to Claire Sebastian with that live report from London.